Hey there! My name is Orion, and I'm the editor and producer of Transmission Folklore. Charlie, our original actor for Carter, has undergone a very sudden move and is no longer able to record. We, um, I will be taking over his role of Carter, and he will still be doing fun behind-the-scenes stuff for the podcast. We will be keeping his episodes up, but marking them all as archived. In the meantime, we will also be posting the re-recorded first and second episodes, as well as the new third and fourth episodes, all within the first week of June 2020. Thank you all so much for your patience as we undergo this change, and we hope you all stick with us. You all have been wonderful. Thank you, and speak soon. Are you mad at me? I'm going to take the silence to mean that you're mad at me. Look, just... Can I explain myself? Oh god, you're not talking. Okay, look, I guess I'm going to have to. This is not a kidnapping. I mean, it's not. I didn't kidnap you. I mean, that's totally what this looks like, right? God, that's totally what this looks like. I'm so sorry, but I didn't kidnap you because that's illegal and totally bad and, um, God, this is gonna sound wild. You're, like, barely going to believe me. It's gonna sound so wild, but just try to believe me. The Lavender Lemonade Collective presents... Transmission Folklore. I mean, I know it's a lot, and I know it's so hard when somebody says, try to believe me, but you barely know them. I mean, heck, my mom. One of my moms. Adeline, she, she used to do that to me all the time. Like, she'd say something so goddamn wild. Like, it would be totally out there, and I would just trust her. Because she was my mom. But in the back of my mind, I was like, Whoa, this is so wild. I'm, I'm sure that's what you're thinking now. I mean, but worse, because you don't know me. <laughs> I know my mom. My name is Carter. I don't know if I ever told you that. Carter Corin, But, um, most people just call me Carter. My other mama, Bianca, and my sister, Claire, and my mom, call me Cartwheel sometimes. If that makes you more comfortable, then Cartwheel is fine. Gosh, um, I just... What else? Um, oh, I'm an anthropology major with a focus in folklore. Does that tell you anything about me? Um, I don't really know what you majored in, uh, but... Uh, all the people in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences know what an anthro major means. I, uh, specifically focus on how a story can travel across the world. Like, that's my main focus, but I also just really like folklore. I mean, that's just fun stuff to know what a story is and how people shaped it. I just, I mean, it's... Oh. You do not care. I can see it. I mean, your face is making this... this face. Oh. Oh, God. God! Holy, holy shit! I promise I'm a good driver. I mean, I'm very good with cars. This is the uh, same car that was my first car, and I bought it myself. A 2006 PT Cruiser. And this is the uh, original chrome on the side, except for the uh, the driver's door. I got into a crash once, the only one I've ever been in, and the door broke off. I am okay though, and uh, I was like 16, so does it matter? No, it really doesn't. And I've had the same car since I was 16, and I'm 22 now, like, I'm pretty good at taking care of cars. Not terrible, at least. I'm decent. Like, very decent. Good even. My mama... Uh, 
She used to be a mechanic, and she taught me a lot before she moved to New Orleans. Like, a ton. And she taught me even more when I started going to college, way close to her than Adeline, and she, like, really wanted me to be good. To be, like, really good. She's a cool mom. Like, not, uh, if you're gonna drink, do it inside cool, but, like, if you want to talk to me about your thoughts and feelings and fears, I'll do my best to understand cool. And she does. She does her best, I guess. Like, it's good. I'm just really nervous right now. I'm not totally sure what to make of everything. Like, I saw you. I mean, over by the bayou, that was so... Why do you look like that? I guess you might not remember. Your eyes were so glazy for a long time, till we got a couple miles away. Whatever, like I said, I need to explain this. Nothing's going to make sense if I don't explain it. About eight hours ago, you were standing on the edge of the bayou, the one by our dorm. You were talking to the most beautiful person who was inside the water. They had this, like, ethereal quality. The water around them was dirty and mucky, the way it always is in Houston. The bayou still smelled like a bayou, all mold and gunk and must. This, this person, though. He didn't look wet like you might imagine a person standing in a bayou would. And he wasn't covered in gunk. And I think you two were debating. Or maybe like, I don't know, you looked really into them. But also, you were talking a lot. Like you were trying to figure out if you were going to jump in or jump them or... I don't know. I, I wasn't close enough to hear. But the person looked at you and motioned to come closer. They waved a hand and swam a little further in, and I saw it. I saw that they had this, this slick tail. It didn't look wet either, it looked smooth. It looked like a fish tail, but also beautiful. It was long, longer than legs would be, and it shone so bright scales that were blue and purple and just so beautiful, I wanted to cry. I thought there was no way I was seeing what I was seeing. I, I must be imagining it, but like, I wasn't. I don't even have that vivid an imagination. All the stories in my in, in my mind I've read from somewhere else. But back back to the person, that the fish in the bayou. They motioned into the gunky brown water, and I was already confused because uh, we're not supposed to get in the bayou. The notice says that there's fish, or bacteria, or something, and we can't swim in it. I don't know why the person in the water had a tail. I watched you walk towards the water, though, and I saw you going in, and then they took their small hand. It was so tiny, like fragile looking, and then just pushed you under the water. It, it happened so fast. They took you by your green ponytail and pushed you into the water, and I thought you were going to die. And so I ran over there, grabbed you by the hand, and the person tried to talk to me, but you know when you're like on the edge of anxiety and you can't hear anything but static? That's where I was. I couldn't hear him, which was probably good. Uh, th this is the wild part, though. I, uh, I think they were a siren. Not like an ambulance wee-woo siren, but like mythic bitch siren. Like drown you in the water with their voice siren. Like literally tried to kill you siren. I don't know this because I'm all powerful or whatever. I just think that it's the only explanation. I mean, how else would there be somebody trying to kill you by way of by you? Someone with a goddamn tail? I'm just... I'm really scared for you. I mean, I didn't know where to go. I panicked. I just... I just threw my stuff in the car, and I threw you in the car. I mean, you're not that heavy. You're, like, really small. Like, 5'2"? Um, but yeah, so now we're here. And here is... still in Texas. Definitely. I just got on I-10 and kept driving. We're not in Winnie yet, but we're close, I think. Saw a sign, like, ten miles ago. Just, I know stories. 
and no one else was around to help you. I didn't want this to be the story that you died in. I don't know you. But I know your name is Sorrel, because I saw it on your door in the dorm. You're like my elevator buddy at the dorm, and also that fish definitely saw me. So, uh, they know I saw them. I don't want to die. Do you? You look unfazed. Why are you so unfazed? Did you know? Your check engine light is on. This episode of Transmission Folklore was written by Nick Coates. Carter is voiced by Orion Ibert. Sarl is voiced by Nick Coates. This episode was edited by Orion Ibert. Special thanks to our supporters on Patreon and Coffee. You can support us by following us on patreon.com slash lavenderlem or follow us on Twitter or Facebook at lavenderlem. Make sure you check out our new website at transmissionfolklore.com. This episode scripted is The Simple Banshee. Someone's got to tell you when you're going to die. <laughs>